Hi everyone, welcome to my short demonstration about how I'm using LilyPond to typeset music for the Open Arbon project. I'm just going to click over here to, here to have a look and make sure this is recording and then we'll get started. Okay, everything's working fine. So um, let's start off like this. This is my <clears throat> open up my file manager. Now most people will, will instantly notice that my computer looks a little bit different. Um, this is because I use, I'm a Linux user and I use a, a very minimalist desktop environment that um, I have set up with all sorts of keyboard shortcuts and it's very efficient workflow. So what I'm doing here is I'm just work, uh, opening up the contributors pack for the Open Ardman project. And what you'll see, I mean, there's not an awful lot in it, but what we have here is um, the contributor's guide, which is a short PDF file that I wrote. It's basically the rules for uh, when you're creating these documents. In fact, the, you know, I keep realizing that there's more to, to go in this, but uh, I will keep that updated on the website in due course. Um, you'll see here, now this is something that's quite important, and it's really sort of in, in many ways the crux of the project is there are two freely av uh, freely available versions of Arben's Cornet method on, on um, well these came straight off IMSLP actually, they're also on archive.org the point is that these two books, this one here was uh, published in 1879 so without, without doubt is well out of copyright um, and as, as you have a quick flick through, you can see here, this is from, oh, I see, that's the that guy that used to give it away on his website. As you can see here, um, the typesetting of this music is not easy on the eye. Um, and, you know, this is, I think this is probably quite an, a, a reason that it's obvious that um, people aren't going to want to use this version of, of Arben's book. So... A few years later, out comes uh, the 1893 edition, again, more than 100 years old at this point, 120 years old. And this one looks a bit better, and actually it's, it's got more exercises in it. This is a more complete version, which is much more like what we're used to um, seeing in terms of the numbers of exercises in the book. But again, it's not the prettiest document in the world, and I think that given the choice, most people would choose... Um, to pirate Alan Vazuti's version or the Claude Gordon edition um, or even once one, one of the newer ones I've, I've seen copies of um, the platinum edition uh, by Carl Fisher published by Carl Fisher I should say floating around uh, on the internet in, in quite high resolution and so you know we don't want to be pirating this material but the point is that this material shouldn't be under copyright anyway because it's it's the book was written over 150 years ago, so um, it's actually quite ridiculous that um, the people are still charging money for it at all. But anyway, in the interest of avoiding uh, piracy and making us all a better copy of this, I've started up the Open Arbon project. And uh, there's more to it than that. The thing is that when you download, um, let's let's do this. Let's have a look at some documents that I've already created as part of this project. When you download. Um, files for the um, you know, from this project they uh, first of all they all come with a, a, a Creative Commons license which means that they are um, it's free for you to use free for you to edit and free for you to share um, and that you know that's I think that having those things protected at this point is actually quite important it's um, very similar to the philosophy behind the, the operating system I'm using, and in fact, that anyway, um, let's have a look. I'm, I just can't talk and look at the same time, so I'm looking for initial exercises. So if I just open up, say, one of these, number 46 or 47, a bit shorter, um, you can see this is I've I've created these with the the generic Lily Pond font, and they've got this. Um, quite a nice uh, sort of title at the top here it says where you've got it from open album project which exercise and then here is the thing it's very clear to read um, oops and then the license agreement at the bottom so as well as getting this PDF which is you know essentially what you would get with any 
anything you download off the internet, you also get the LilyPond files. And that's really what this video is all about, is these LilyPond files here. Um, so let's um, take a look inside one of these. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is open this up in a normal text editor. In fact, it, I, I could even go one further with this and open it up in a command line interface if you wanted. You really don't even need a text editor as complicated as what is essentially a copy of WordPad. <laughs> but you can see that at first glance this is pretty complicated um, stuff and all of this here. Um, and you, you know, it's, it's, Lily Pond has got a, a fairly steep learning curve. But actually, I um, picked up on on how to use all this stuff. I created this template, and I've just been adding in more and more commands uh, as we go. Um, sort of, I, I've done it all in two weeks. I've produced uh, uh, so far over six, 62 of Arben's exercises. One of the characteristic studies. Um, some of Herbert Clark's technical studies book again that's another one that's out of copyright um, and I've done it you know once you get in the hang of it it's really fast and easy to use and hopefully this demonstration will show will show that um, this madness here is is actually the entire um, all of the notes that make up that exercise um, and so you can see that actually once you get into writing music with the program, um, especially if you've got a template that, that someone like me has already made for you, then um, it is literally, you want to print an A on the screen, you type A. Now, I could take this, this file here and I can uh, run it through the LilyPond program and it will, it will churn out a PDF. But there's one thing better than that that we can use, and that is this program called Frescobaldi named after an old Italian composer. Um, let's go back to the contributors pack. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to open up the 1893 edition of uh, Arvin's Method and I'm going to move it to a different desktop. Let's stick it on two. So, um, that's up here. Now I've done all of these exercises already so let's move on to something I haven't done and I'm just going to start off by showing you, okay this is not a bad this will be a good one to do because it's got a lot of articulation and stuff in it as well. So you can see how simply that that works. So I'm just going to leave this open here. Let's uh, make a bit more space. And on this side, I'm going to open up. This is the program Frescobaldi, which um, you know at first glance doesn't give you a lot of information. But if I just go um, open up that template file. Let's just make sure I've got the right version. Um, so what's clever about this? I mean, it's a, again, to most people's eye, having um, a music editor that actually displays the music that you're editing won't seem particularly uh, um, won't seem particularly advanced at this point. But um, I don't think we need that line. That line there is for um, removing unnecessary key signatures at the ends of lines. Um, so yeah, there are certain decisions that I've made in, in setting up this project, things like the fonts, um, the general layout rules, the way that we lay out this document here. I've made it this size because you can fit about four bars with, with articulations on every note in that space. We don't really want to be using more than four bars per line because you already saw in, that, in the case of the exercise I showed you already that it can get wild. Um, in terms of you know being difficult to read the text. Anyway, there are other features going on here that um, that I, I haven't mentioned. You know, obviously this is color coded, so we can see just from a glance. You know, the stuff that is text is in red. Um, these are my font settings. Uh, you know, this is all to do with the layout of of this business up here. And for the most part, you know, until you start creating your scores you don't need to work your own scores you don't need to worry about that too much so I'm just going to start off here I'll take a quick glance back at this we've got okay um, it's in 4-4 four, four. I'm, I'm writing numerical time uh, key si numerical time signatures that's my choice again it's something that I've decided is is a better way for a modern version of the book but if anyone downloads my materials and decides that they wanted to say common time at the start 
you can just edit it in, in the matter of seconds. Look, I, in fact, I can just comment out this line and already it's changed. So it's, it's that simple to, to, to do something. And that's universal. That would have changed across the, the entire document. And that's the sort of thing that having written a bunch of um, ebooks for Trumpet, this is the, what I was looking for, is, is a piece of software where um, you know, I really feel like I'm in control of the layouts and I'm in control of, well, typesetting. And really, actually, you know, when you talk to people who are really are into writing academic documents, it's, it's very common for them to use these markup style um, creators because um, the computer is doing all the hard work. Whereas when you are, um, you know, when you're using even something like Sibelius or Finale, you know, you st I've, I've wasted more time typesetting with those programs and I have actually writing music and it's it gets very frustrating actually when you're trying to write a book and you're spending the last sort of week or so after everything's written just trying to get it to look right on the page um, I mean there's there there is a, a, a greater copyright issue at hand when it comes to Sibelius and Finale which I'm going to write a blog post about and I won't bore you with it now because I fear this video is already getting a bit long but let's have a look um, let's get straight into this business. So, what have we got? I'm not. Mm. I haven't made a decision about putting in these twos, um, but let's just stick with the text. So we've got G crotchet Greek G minim G sharp. So we're just going to go G. So that's the note. No, oh, this isn't selected. G, and you can see there it appears. Now um, this is set on relative mode which means that when I type in a series of notes, if I go G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, um, it's going to write the next note um, as close to the previous note as possible. So it, as much as a fourth away. If I go up to a C or down to a D, those that's a perfect fourth. That's all going to stay within the same octave. If I wanted to go to the low C, I then have to put a, a, a mark um, in fact, that's gone further uh, because I, I was like this, but because <laughs> it's it's relative to the D that came before. But coming back to that G, if I wanted to put in a low C, I'll just do it like this. Or if I wanted to put in the high D, I would do it like this. So using a commas or single speech marks. Um, again, this note is relative to that C. So this uh, is all very logical when you're typing. You'll find that it really speeds up the process. When I wrote out the interval exercises, I did it um, not in relative mode because it was much easier when you've got every other note is a C in the staff. Um, it's easier to, to implicitly uh, specify what that, which note you, you want it to, to print in un, under those conditions. Anyway, um, so we've got a G and in order to make it into a crotchet, and you can see this is a crotchet because that's a default value, but I'm going to do it anyway, is four. It's a quarter note, there is our four, we want it to be an octave higher. Now I want a minim, so I will put a two. And then we'll just carry on. Now there's the, in order to get sharps, you put the letter S. If you want to put flats, you put um, the letter F. Which is I keep putting B because I'm so used to writing B for flat. And obviously, it's not actually right in any way, but um, that habit, you know, things change. So let's go like this. And it was it another A? I've already forgotten. Yes, it was. Um, I don't know why that's not sticking with my thing? So C sharp. Similarly to the note, uh, similarly to the um, note types, if you want, you know, if I wanted to just carry on with this like this rhythm, if it was all crotchets, I could just go crotchet, 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 and it's just going to keep writing them like that. Similarly, I could go back here if I change this one to a minim. Oh, that's a semi-brief. Same same effect. It's just going to keep adding them in. You notice I'm not doing anything to add bars into the end of the document. Anything that you know, you waste a lot of time doing that in, in some other um, writing tools. So B B D D G. Let's just go as far as there. So 
Oops, I've gone in the wrong place. <laughs> um, it's actually much faster when you're not talking. If I want to put in um, a rest, I'm just going to go R like that. So what we've, we've just got this little line here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and put the articulations in there. This is a repeating pattern. It seems that we've got dots on all of the crotchets, and we've got um, martellato. I'm not sure I even... Oh, I do know the, the, the code for that. Um, on all the minims. So in order to add an articulation, you put a dash, and in this case, a, a dot for the staccato, and it's uh, one of those for a, for a martellato, you can see. Now, um, if I'm if if I'm doing a whole load of these all um, all in a row, what I will typically do, say if I had again, let me just start a let me start a loop line here. You do that with this code break. Um, if I just went G A B C D E F G, here's my G or Mixolydian scale. Um, let's get that. You can see that whole scale is there. Um, now if I wanted to put staccatos on all those notes, one of the features of this program is that I can just um, open up this quick edit thing here. Oops, I've got two dots on each one, I didn't want to do that. I can, and just by clicking there, all of the selected notes have now got staccatos on them, as you can see. Um, so that can make for some really fast typing when, when everything is uniform. Um, so something, you know, obviously then we can get into the realm of, um, you know, just like with anything else, I could copy and paste this. So you know, there's a whole bunch of these scales and oops, I did something a bit stupid there, but let's, um, if I just put a comma on each of these, and they'll come down. They'll all be, they'll all be like this. What if I wanted to, to um, say, for, say, an example, uh, in the case of something like the, the Clark exercises, I wanted to transpose. Um, I wrote, you, you write an exercise, and then the next twenty exercises are the same thing in different keys. Well, what I'm just going to do here is I will select that, and again, you can just go here, transpose. Now there are. Um, you put in a note and then a relative note, so from where you are and where you're going, essentially. In this case, it's just going to shove a, a sharp in front of everything. But let's take this a step further. I could go, this is in the key of G major. I could go here, this is in the, um, the key of G sharp major. Oops, that's a little bit... Uh, um, a little bit weird, but never mind. Let's see if it knows. It does know G sharp major. Look at the nice F double sharp there. That was a bit stupid. Um, let's change that. So I'm just going to go like this, and I can go pitch. I can go from G sharp to A flat, and you'll notice oops, that it changes the key signature as well, uh, which is nice. Still got that whole bit of a mixolydian scale thing going on there, but I don't really care. It's not it's not massively important. So what I could do is if I could I could just copy this, paste it there, and then tools transpose, and I'm going to go from A flat to A major, and so on and so on. And you can see that. That it's just carrying on now. I, I that little bit of code that I took out earlier on is for cleaning up this mess. A any kind of time setting option, any kind of um, um, you know layout or appearance stuff. There is code for everything now. Maybe just to finish this little thing off, what I'm going to do is. Um, I'll show you a bit of the documentation and then we'll probably finish. So if you take a look at, let's go here to Firefox, um, if I 
I mean, if I, I can essentially just go to the search engine, now I use this one, you can use whatever you want, and I can type in here, I just type lily pond, what do I want to do? Remove um, time signature, like this, and visibility of objects is actually, I know that that's the page it's on, and you can come in here and you can see that there is the code and there is the um, example of how it works. So um, it gives you all the different options that are necessary for this. So um, let me open up a file to demonstrate how that bit of code worked. But anyway, the point is that this, this documentation is, ex is very extensive and it, it tells you everything you need. Um, if you are not fond of reading documentation, you could just go to the Lily Pond Facebook group and, and ask a question in there, and the people are really friendly and everyone's really enthusiastic about the software. So, um, just to finish this, so I can, I, I won't save it actually because I haven't done a lot of the details at all, but you could just go, um, you'll notice that I've done this a lot in the exercise I've made already because I think that it's quite um, I want these these documents to be easy to read which means that you know once in a, once a pattern has been established I just put sim simile and we know to carry on playing in that same way um, right so why well, actually I mean all I was going to do was just load up this uh, number nine I, I, I keep referring to this one quite a lot if I go to the Initial exercises, Lily Pond files, exercise number nine. Again, all of this material is free to download from my website. So go, do go and take a look at it. And what you'll see here, um, whenever we go from B to C major, it really loves to, um, even if I've told it not, not to put key signatures at the end of every line, it's going to do it in that case. And so here is just a little bit of code. I'm probably going to make a document with all these one-liners in, in them um, for the project, because just for, for any contributors, quick reference. Um, but let's say if I took out all of these little bits, you can see this or is already considerably messier with all the every every flat is cancelled and then the sharp is added in, and this is you know taking us in that direction of a really messy score that. I could understand why someone would not want to use this over um, another version that's, that's you know, freely available. So anyway, that's, that's that was just a demonstration of these. These are little snippets of code that I've pulled straight out of that documentation, and it's really easy. Um, something just so that you know what's going on down here. Let me move this out of the way. If you look, um, you can see there's this this log here of the code being compiled. Um, I've lost the picture of me. There I am. I'll leave it there for now. Um, if there are errors, if I write something stupid like um, I, don't, I don't know, let's just say I don't know, you can see that there's an error will come up here and it will tell you where that error is as well. You can see that and uh, easily take it out. So you've always got a lot of information telling you, you know, constantly keeping track of what you're doing over here. Um, this is a good example of an exercise where I, you know, all I did was, um, let's take that line out, you can just take this four lines of code, copy it, paste it, um, and then transpose it. Now, in the Arben book, he's writing a lot of stuff in G flat major and not a lot of stuff in F sharp major. It's funny how I'm starting to notice all these little quirks in that book. Um, like his, his, um, the things he says about playing wide intervals and, and high notes are, are quite laughable in modern, in, you know, compared to modern trumpet technique. But anyway, there we go. That's. Um, that's just something I did and you can see you saw me do it so I, I think I'll stop this video here because I don't want it to be massively long I'm already concerned it's about twice as long as it would be interesting 
but um, thanks for watching and feel free to get in touch if you have any questions if you want to get involved in the project or um, if people are really curious about my crazy desktop environment then you know I could do some videos about that I probably won't stick them on my trumpet channel but um, get in touch with me at this website trumpetpla.net that looks like this um, contact there we go there's my twitter all this sort of business there's blogger right and etc etc so that's or if you want to get involved in the project I mean, you're still contacting me, but this is the Open Album Project website here. Um, and you can find out more information about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and that sort of business. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.